supercars. A world of high-octane, high-tech, high-performance vehicles. And the man who modifies them for the rich and famous is Afzal Khan. When it comes to style and it comes to design, no request is too crazy. It's the only way we could build a gun case in the boot. I absolutely love supercars. I'm the master of redesigning how they look. I've never come across anybody that could actually challenge me. Khan can make any car look great inside and out. <laughs> but now he's mentoring a pair of engineers who want a piece of the action, making great cars even better. I've developed prototypes for some of the world's fastest supercars. Oh, petrol. Doesn't matter how complicated the project is. Water injection. Fuel and oxygen. Kaboom. By fixing resolve problems for the world's leading luxury car manufacturers. We have a supercharger there and our engine here. Yeah. Perhaps about the bigger picture. I'm the one that sorts all the problems out, actually makes it work. The boys want to impress Khan by taking cars already engineered to the max and improving their performance Snap. Their power and their looks. This car needs to look aggressive. Unstoppable. Will the engineers ever join Khan's empire? We spent 1.3 million pounds on that car. Oh, can he smell clutch? Or will they end up on the scrap heap? Mr. Khan has given us a golden opportunity here. <laughs> Let's just hope we don't mess this one up. <laughs>I might just have the guys for that, actually. I'm just working with a, um, a couple of colleagues at the moment. I think that might be just their bag. I'm trusting Ralph and Ron to do this project, but at the same time, it's not something cheap and cheerful. They've got to take this quite serious. Well, hopefully you come for a ride and come shooting with me, too. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> chin, chin. Cheers. The £229,000 Bentley Mulsan. One of the most luxurious stately cruisers on the supercar market. But it's a far cry from the world of hunting, where vehicles need to tackle demanding terrain, machines like the unstoppable eight-wheeled Argo. Ralph and Ronan have got their work cut out for them, as these all-terrain mud monsters are built for functionality in the great outdoors, not the manicured lawns of the English upper class. With a new commission on the table, Khan needs to call engineers Ralph and Ronan to give them the brief. Hi, Ralph. I've got a project for you. It's Mr. Khan. I've got a very um, interesting customer and a dear friend who lives in Chelsea. He's got um, a Bentley Multan. And he's quite high up in the world of shooting. Interesting. So what are you thinking? It will do partly off-roading, so it's got to go up into Scotland. It's got suspension modifications. OK. Off-road tyres. Think of this, this is a very expensive car, and it's got to be right. So the attention to detail is very important. OK, so no pressure then. Right, the car will be with you shortly. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bentley is one of England's most prestigious car manufacturers, and in 2010, it launched the Mulsanne as its flagship luxury saloon. This 505 brake horsepower twin turbo missile is essentially an 184 miles per hour living room on wheels. Wherever it goes, the Mulsanne turns heads and demands respect, but turning it into a hunting vehicle is surely a step too far. 
Bentley. <sighs> now, a sophisticated shooting brake. Our mission is to turn the Bentley into an off-roader that can brave the Scottish wilderness. But it was built for roads, not mud. Obviously, your, your Land Rover, your four-wheel drive, has been typically the sort of thing that gets you into the rough areas of the countryside. And the great okay. thing about the, the old Land Rovers with a roof rack like that is you could actually stand on top of it. We also need to equip the car with everything a gentleman hunter requires for a weekend shooting. We've got to integrate this lot. Get the gun case in there, maybe some other paraphernalia, drinks cabinet or something like that. This is a seriously expensive car. Can't wait to get my hands on it and start mucking around with it. Gentleman's vehicle. Yeah. And obviously what gentlemen drink... His tea. His tea. Nice one. To the next one. Meanwhile, Ralph and Ronan are getting acquainted with the Bentley's sumptuous luxury. What do you think? It's rather nice, actually. Virtually silent. It's a rather splendid environment, I think you'll agree. The Bentley's amazingly quiet. It's so smooth. You could hear a pin drop in there. I feel mm. like I should be reading my paper, perhaps, or yeah. smoking a pipe. Ralph and I can turn anything into anything. What we don't know yet is the capabilities of the vehicle, and once we've found that out, we'll have more of an idea of the task on our hands. We are in refined transport. It's going to feel less refined if we try and take it through a field, though, to go shooting. A very valid point is that. If the boys are going to engineer the Bentley to take on the rugged hills of Scotland, it's important they establish its baseline off-road ability. So it's time for an excursion into a farmer's field. Nicely done. Ah. Very oh, nicely it's done. clonking the underside a bit. It is a bit, but still, I'm impressed you got that far. Go onto the slippery stuff now. Yep, okie doke. And round and round. Yep, and... Uh, we're stationary. I see wheel spinning. Yeah, I'd say that was fairly well buried. We've got no more than 50 metres into the field. 505 horsepower, 2.7 tonnes and road tyres. I suppose you want me to push, don't you? Yeah, if you would. It was a mud bath. When you're ready, mate. Unfortunately for the boys, their Bentley has bottomed out. Oh, it's not going anywhere, mate. Nicely done, mate. Yeah. That is good and properly stuck. While you sit there in your warmth, yeah. I see if I can't flag down someone to pull you out. Yeah, cheers, mate. See if you can find a Land Rover. Mr. Khan could see it now, he'd go ballistic. Oh, is this the cavalry coming? OK, you ready, Ralph? Ready when you are, mate. Right. Dan, can you take the slack? We might be more stuck than I thought. Ralph's done such a thorough job of testing that a 4x4 can't pull it out. Ah! Tell you what, though, as a test, it's worked out brilliantly because it's shown that it needs more ground clearance because now it's actually sitting on the ground. Look at that. Well, you did do a good job of burying it, to be fair. That is true. And it was quite lumpy as we came over those bumps. There was definite ground contact. We hit the underside of the car, so some sort of bash plates underneath might be a good idea. And, as you say, a bit more ground clearance. Yay! I'm glad Mr Khan can't see this. It's a bit of a sorry state of affairs. Automobile design guru Avzal Khan has promised his good friend Stephen Maitland Oxley he would turn his Bentley Mulsan into an off-road hunting machine. Chin chin. Cheers. And has tasked engineers Ralph and Ronan with the job. It's going to feel less refined if we try and take it through a field. And if there's one thing Ralph and Ronan know after testing the Bentley's off-road capability... It's not going anywhere, mate. It's that they have an enormous task in front of them. Utterly, utterly useless. Luckily, the boys have come up with a plan to transform the Bentley into a monster hunting machine. The Bentley. Gentleman's hunting carriage. So I'm thinking, step one... Yes. ..we need to give it the ability to get wherever it needs to go to. Our tests prove that when the surface becomes slippery, the Bentley just goes out of control. Well, as you know, it does actually have air suspension, which is adjustable, so I think we might be able to do something with that to give us a bit of additional clearance. So that will get us through the savannah or wherever we want to go. But that could be quite a long way away. Which brings me very nicely to step two. Long-range fuel tanks. 
The Malsan 6.75 litre engine only gets about 300 miles from a tank full, and that's on the road. We really need to find a way to carry more fuel. That means we can go anywhere we want to with this vehicle, but we don't want to frighten the animals off. So, step three mm -hmm. is a hide. Oh, I know where you can keep out the way, you don't disturb the animals. Fitting a hide on top of the Bentley is a massive challenge. The roof was never designed to carry that much weight. The mobile civilised killing machine. Step four. Styling. Some sort of body kit. And step four, Mr Khan's going to add a luxurious styling package for the English country gentleman. <laughs> Has anyone ever done a tweed Bentley before? Good, another job well done. Oh, I think so. Right. The plan to transform the Mulsanne into an off-road beast packed with hunting gear is a high-stakes one that simply can't go wrong. The last thing Khan wants is a broken Bentley on his hands. With no time to spare, the car is in the workshop ready to be jacked up. And with no margin for error, Ronan has called in one of Germany's top suspension engineers. Look at that. Bang on time. Uh, very German. Hi, hey, Ron. Danny. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Good journey? Yes. Well, come and have a look. Yes. Step one of the build is to fit a new air suspension system that will inflate to lift the Mulsanne much further from the ground, just like a 4x4. So the kit Dan has brought over consists of a new compressor, air tanks to store the compressed air, new sensors who measure the height of the car, a unit to go in the car which gives you the controls of what height you want, and then a whole new wiring loom and all the air pipes to connect everything together. The Bentley gives us another challenge, that instead of coil springs, which we could simply replace, it uses airbag suspension. That's what gives it the famously comfy ride. The system uses a central computer that monitors each corner of the car, pumping compressed air into the bellows to give it the exact ride height that it needs. We're going to re-engineer the Bentley system to give us much greater ride height. Tangled snake. But reworking the suspension on something as refined as a Bentley is no small task. Both pipes going through the hole. The compressors and the air tanks are going to sit in the boot, and the control unit for the compressor is going to sit in the boot. With all the electronics and air systems yeah. fitted in the boot, the boys are ready to attack the four corners of the Mulsanne. It comes off nicely. And there is our airbag all covered with a nice rubber bellows to keep all the working bits away from the dirt. What we're going to do is move the suspension down as if the car had been lifted up. It's something Bentley could do, but there's no need to. It's not meant to be an off-road car. I'm sure Bentley don't envisage that their customers are going to cross muddy fields and do what Ralph did. We're just taking advantage of something that's already there in a clever way. The little airline is under here. It's blue. It's quite pretty. A little, little bit of four mil tube. Doesn't seem like very much to hold a car, old car up. No, I know I'm on the right track. There's all the air coming out. <laughs> a bit like an accordion. <laughs> Once the pipes are fitted, Danny needs to calibrate the system and ensure there are no air leaks in the many new connections. Now you see it's moving like slowly. OK. We can now program it to the standard height mm -hmm. or to the off-road height. Lovely. The calibration is done, everything is stored, so the system will now run itself. So that's our new suspension fitted. Currently, it's in its normal ride height position. Now I'm going to go up to give us maximum off-road position for hunting. And you can see it's gradually going up. Not too rushed in a nice, refined, Bentley-esque manner. Gap's getting bigger, looking more and more off-road. So I would say that's about 10 centimetres more clearance than we had from standard position. And you can hear it hissing out. Down she comes, down she comes, down she comes, and stops. It's all well and good measuring how much difference we made to ride height, but what we need to see is how much better it is off-road. And there's only one way to do that. Let's test it. Let's see what this beastie can do. This is the most amazingly civilised environment I've ever been in for an off-road. ground is actually quite nasty. This could get a lot of regular cars stuck ever so easily. Never mind this huge, great big limousine of a beast. 
But will that extra 10 centimetres of ground clearance make all the difference when the going gets really rough? Yes. Doing better than I could have hoped for. Can't imagine how our client is going to find conditions worse than this to be taking his car down. Ever so impressive. Ah, what's happened there? No. Hang on a minute. I've got. I've got no fuel. Giving 16.8 miles to the gallon, the Marsan is a gas guzzler, especially when off-roading. Is that Steve? Yeah, um, a little problem. Something the boys are going to have to fix. Mate, am I glad to see you. As far as I'm concerned, it's been a really good, successful day's testing. The cars performed brilliantly around these off-road tracks, not getting stuck, driving even better than I expected. Long-range tanks were something that Ralph and I were thinking about, now we know we need to fit it. Supercar mod king Avzal Khan has tasked engineering duo Ralph and Ronan with turning a stately Bentley Mulsan into an all-terrain hunting vehicle. So far, so good, except for one thing. It drinks petrol like there's no tomorrow. I've got no fuel. Darn it. Step two of the transformation is to give the car the ability to sustain a 1,000-mile hunting excursion without filling up. To make that happen, Ralph has gone to see a fuel systems expert. I brought the Bentley to an LPG specialist in Leeds. LPG is liquefied petroleum gas. That'll give us extra range so we can travel a lot longer. The liquid gas will be stored in a pressurised tank in the Bentley's boot, supplying fuel to the existing injection system via new lines and a compressor, all controlled by its own engine management computer. Now, one of the big problems with this is that this car was never designed to have OPG fitted on it. A lot of these components are quite big, particularly the tank, which is massive. Now, we are intending to get a large gun case in the back here as well, so we're going to have to be a bit careful. OK, we can go... Uh about 90 litres. Finding somewhere to put all those bits is going to be a massive challenge. Oh, yes. right. Installing an LPG system has three main stages. First of all is fitting the gas tank in the boot. <sighs> Looking good. So the liquid LPG goes down this from the tank in the back of the car here to the evaporator at the front. Then we've got to work in the engine bay to fit the evaporator, all the pipes, the injectors, all the bits and pieces. Next thing is to connect the gas pipe up from our evaporator up to the fuel rail. With the two fuel systems, you can drive on petrol, and when that's done, you can drive on the LPG, and you've got range that's much greater than the original vehicle. And it's these injectors here that actually squirt the gas LPG into the engine to make it run. And the third and final stage is arguably the most tricky, wiring it all together. So we've got to get all of this lot all wired up into there. It's a very complex system, and if we get something wrong, worst case scenario is it will backfire through the intake system and blow it to pieces. After spending the entire night wiring in the LPG system, Ralph has been summoned to Khan HQ to report back on the Bentley's progress. Uh, Ralph's here. Just give us a minute, will you? Hi, Ralph. Hello. How's it going? Not too bad, not too bad. We're making very good progress. We've got a very good plan now. Okay. Uh, we looked at the suspension and we raised it up. We've uh, decided that he needed to extend the range so he could get up to the shooting grounds and okay, not run good. out fuel up there. So we've installed an LPG system on the car. That's running nice. Um, You've done what? LPG system. So uh, we've got a big cylinder in the boot there, so... It no, really no, I know, what an L I know what an LPG conversion is. Good, good, good. It, it, it can't stay. What? You've devalued a client's car by fitting something that's just inappropriate for the type of vehicle that it is. How can we devalue it? We've added something to it. it it's used predominantly for somebody who wants to save money. That's not the intention of this particular customer. Khan will go absolutely crazy if he finds out. I spent ages doing that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. 
You need to find an alternative for it, and you need to do it fairly quickly. I'll leave you with it. Thanks. Steve just didn't see the beauty of the LPG system. He just did not get it at all, and he's dictated that we've got to take it off. That means that myself and Ronan have got a big job to work out how we're going to power range extension on this vehicle in the time left. Off we go again then. Whilst Ralph attempts to solve the fuel crisis, Ronan is pressing ahead with another crucial phase of the build, the styling package. He's come to the automotive design department at Coventry University, where he hopes to pull in a favour that will impress Mr Khan. Dennis? Hello. Ronan, we chatted. How are you doing? Yeah, come in, come in. Thank you, thank you. Welcome to the world of automotive design. Oh, look at this. This, this is, is... our main play studios. Wow. Ronan hopes this team of clay modellers can build him a quarter-scale replica of the Mulsan, which Mr Khan can then use to inspire a brand new body kit to tie the whole hunting package together. Clay as a modelling tool has been used in the automotive world since the 30s. Now, it's fascinating that in today's world of digital everything, it's still just as important as it ever was. And it's not the same as computer-aided design type work, because this is physical. It has light falling on it, you can see it in the corner of your eyes. You can't really do that with CAD. That's a, you need a solid object. And a solid object you can change easily is the beauty of clay. How long would it take to make a clay, normally? For a full-size clay, maybe three months. OK. But that would be with a team of eight guys. For a scale model, at least a month, six weeks. At least a month, like six weeks. OK, that's interesting information. Do you like a challenge? Um, yes, I love challenges. Yeah? Yeah. We've only got two weeks to do it. Wow. <laughs> and it's got to be absolutely right wow. when it's done. Can you do that, Igor? Well, I'll try. I'll try. In two weeks' time, I'm going to bring Mr Khan down here so he can try ideas out on a real physical model. I'm also really looking forward to seeing his expression of surprise and hopefully I'll get to earn some brownie points. With a plan in place for the styling, back at base, Ralph's come up with a solution to extend the Bentley's fuel range without the need for a cumbersome LPG kit. Hello, mate. Hi. What we need is a massive fuel tank. OK. LPG didn't work out quite so well, but I'm sure fitting a massive custom-made aluminium fuel tank in the back, that's going to do the job. Oh, yeah. There we go. It is heavy. Yeah, isn't it? Right. The plan is to construct a bespoke aluminium tank which will fit right. snugly in the Bentley's boot while still leaving enough room for the client's hunting paraphernalia. The way this works is our new tank will feed into the old tank in front of it so that you'll use up all of the fuel in the new tank and then you'll use up all the fuel in the original tank. That'll give us an extra six, maybe 700 miles range if you're on a run. Combine that with the original tank and we're about 900 plus miles, maybe even 1,000 miles. Can you imagine that? 1,000 mile Bentley. That's one hell of a marketing thing for Mr. Khan to use, isn't it? Supercar tycoon Avzal Khan is transforming a luxury Bentley into an off-road hunting vehicle for a very special client. Stephen Maitland Oxley knows what he likes. As you know, Avzal, I'm into the finer things in life. And the pressure is on engineers Ralph and Ronan to deliver. What do you think? It's rather nice, actually. A lot of my friends drive Range Rovers and other sort of SUVs, but they're all rather humdrum. They don't have that sort of cachet that I think Afsal can actually make this car uh, gain. Now, two worlds are about to collide. Khan summoned us to the boardroom to talk about the Bentley. I don't really know why. No, it's something to do with a hunting application, but there's loads of details we don't have. All right, then. Hello, Hello sir. Oh, yeah. Right. So the reason why I've called you in is I'd like you two to meet the client. Us. Okay. Good. Yeah. Oh. Looking at Rolf and Ronin, I don't think they understand anything about hunting. They're typical engineers and geeks. He will educate you on hunting. That'd be really interesting. This is serious business. Mm. He's always right. You understand? Yes. Splendid. OK, it should be a very interesting experience. Should Look be. forward to it. All, All right. right. The other thing is, I need you guys to be dressed decent. 
But at the moment, you're a pair of tramps. What do you mean? This is good tweet. Yeah, no, that's rubbish, mate. In our industry, image is the key thing. What do we do? We dress cars up so people can go out and pose in them. And can you invest in the corn, my friend? No. You do need to. Yeah. I keep breaking them. Mr. Khan's asked us to smarten up before we meet the customer. Mm, yeah. What's that all about? Well, it's, that's fine, isn't it? It is. I mean, you know, smart doesn't make things go quicker, does it? No. No. All right, thank you for that. You've got that. Right then, we better get on with it. Yeah, clothes shopping. You are, no, you are booking hairdressers, boy. There's no hairdresser who will touch this. Mr. Khan gave us a project to work on a Bentley for a customer of his, an important client. So we've come to the client's house and Mr. Khan told us to dress smartly. So we've done our best attempt of uh, removing the oily scruff look. I must say, mate, your hair is looking a lot less um, natural. <laughs> it, it's feeling a lot less natural, yes, yes. Oh, good morning, chaps. You chaps are awfully smart for engineers. Oh, right. So this Bentley, Mr. Khan sent us down here to find out what you actually need from it. Yep. Um, I do a lot of hunting and shooting and fishing, and I go up to Scotland a lot. Um, now, Bentley's a great car, but it doesn't quite do all the things that I need it to do no. for going on shooting things. Um, I, I just want to see the look on people's faces, that basically when they bounced all the way up there in their Range Rovers and their Land Rovers, and then I glide in effortless comfort and style up to the top of the moor and then pop the guns out of the boot. You chaps obviously know a lot about engineering and cars and everything else, but how much do you know about the hunting world out there in the mud? Well, quite a lot about the money world, but always in the context of vehicles rather than shooting things in the mm -hmm. Apple pursuits kind of thing. So yeah, it's, we've not shot anything, so uh, right. not aware of. Okay, well we've got to sort that out, I think, immediately. I'll tell you what, I've got a friend of mine up in, uh, he's runs a shoot up in Cheshire, um, and what I can do is I will get you guys to go up there, um, spend the day up there, do some shooting, meet all the other people, get to know a bit more about and guns. Yeah, absolutely we could do that. The most um, important thing is, it's got to be a real head turner, okay? Brilliant. I'll see you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that went rather well, don't you? Well, all the effort of dressing up certainly seemed to make an impression with the clients. Although he was expecting us to look more like engineers than, um, Doormen. We've been invited to go to a shooting club and have something I've never done before. I'm looking forward to this lot. Yeah, it should be fun. Now the boys know exactly what the client wants, but before heading back to the workshop, they're off to experience a shoot firsthand. The next stage of the build is to add some hunting equipment to our Bentley. But as neither of us have had any experience with guns, we've come here to Cheshire to a shooting race to find out what tools the average huntsman needs. Whoa. I've never shot a shotgun before, so while we're here, I'm hoping to give it a go. Uh, Good hello. afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Feet have to be roughly 10 to 12 inches apart. Gun closes, the gun comes up to my shoulder. Pull, move up, move up. As it peaks, shoot. Take the gun from me. Pull. Okay, move up, move up. Unlucky. We'll have another go. Locked and loaded. Pull! Well, hey! Perfect shot. How does Thank that you. feel? Pull! Fantastic. Wow. It's good fun, this is. We've got a brief. We've got a Bentley Mulsanne that someone's asked to turn into a, a gentleman's shooting vehicle. Um, so we're wondering what sort of modifications we need to do to make it usable. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the one thing that came over is everything's about luxury and presentation. It's a very much a, a rich man's sport, this. If we can help the bloke actually find his prey with maybe some night vision goggles or some sort of vision aid, yeah. quite a flash thing to do. Is there any situation where people would take their vehicle out to where they're actually shooting? If we were big game shooting, um, there are vehicles that have the drop-down windscreens and they do shoot from the vehicles. In this country, you'd probably be uh, shooting pigeon, crows, um, and then you'd go and set your hide up and then sit there all day and wait for the pigeons or the crows to come. If you actually take a hide with you, like a glorified tent, it's going to be quite cumbersome to set up. I don't think there's anything on the market already that we can just go out and buy, is there? So I think what we have here is a need to build a bespoke solution for our clients. We've clearly got a lot of engineering to do and not a lot of time to do it. Automobile design guru Avzal Khan has promised his good friend Stephen Maitland Oxley he would turn his Bentley Mulsanne into an off-road hunting machine. Chin chin. Cheers. And has tasked engineers Ralph and Ronan with the job. It's going to feel less refined if we try and take it through a field. <laughs> 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 
Step three of the Bentley Mega Build includes fitting a collapsible shooting hide on top of the Malsan, as well as a clever night vision system and a secure gun case. Whilst Ronan is off hunting for a canopy, Chief Engineer Ralph has a date with a metal fabricator who he hopes can build a made-to-measure roof platform strong enough to hold the hide and the hunter inside. The Bentley is a very unusual choice for this sort of thing. Most people use Land Rovers or such like with flat roofs. They're very easy to convert. This one's very difficult indeed. And as you can see, there are no obvious fixing points on it at all. Yeah. Um, OK. Fancy a challenge? Yeah, why not? Shall we start sketching something out? OK. The mechanical challenges of making a roof rack for this car are enormous. It has to be strong enough to support the weight of Stephen and all his kit around him, but it also has to put up with the forces from wind when you're driving down the motorway. Go down the route of something, suction or adhesive or... All oh, right, so put some, like, suction cups here, maybe, holding the... Yeah, that sort of thing. Mm. I don't think that's going to be strong enough, though. You think about going down the motorway and the speeds the road back speeds, yeah. How about some legs coming down with uh, adhesive where these meet the roof? They have to be exactly flat onto the roof structure. What we need to do is make a curved plate that's actually the same shape as the roof. We can then make adapters and make a framework that goes around the whole edge of the roof and then mount our platform on top of that. The lads set to work on constructing a prototype rack to ensure their design will be a fit for the Bentley. Strong enough to support the potential 150 kilogram weight of the hide and Mr. Khan's client inside it. No one's seen anything like this before. It's going to make a real buzz in the hunting world, as long as we don't make it look ridiculous. This one's on gas struts. You can pull it down. Meanwhile, at the outdoor store, Ronan's immersing himself in the bewildering world of luxury pop-up roof tents. I probably don't need the leopard skin interior either. Right. Oops. Ralph and I have got an idea to build a rooftop space on the Bentley for our hunter to wait for his prey in comfort. And if he wants to, he can stay there overnight so he's ready to go hunting the next morning. Similar sort of thing. You can put the ladder inside. Um, and then when you arrive at the camp, you just wind her up. About 50 turns of the handle, and you can just pop it straight back that. up. So that's the kind of thing that I'd like. That'd be perfect. Do you want to have a little sit in this? No, no, help yourself. It's really quite cosy in here. I mean, I'm not a little person, and I could comfortably sleep in here overnight, waiting for my prey in the morning. And there's one of these at each end. Now, these have got mosquito net in, but there's no reason we couldn't get these modified so that you could actually possibly poke a gun out or poke a camera out. I've never seen a roof tent fitted to a Bentley before, and I think the most appropriate word here is unique. And I could quite easily imagine going hunting even in winter with this. Even though I think Mr Khan's not going to get it, I'm quite excited about this. It's going to be practical, comfortable, and you know what? I think this might be the world's fastest tent. Back at the workshop, Ralph is fitting the last few components to complete the hunting conversion. This Bentley needs to be equipped with everything that Stephen needs for a weekend's hunting. Now, Stephen was very clear that he needs somewhere secure to store his guns. So we made him a gun case storage system. Oh, look at that. Spot on. That's a really nice finishing touch, that, particularly with this tweed. I think that's just going to be... That's just going to be the icing on the cake. But Ralph's got one more trick up his sleeve. For the last piece of this puzzle, we're going to fit an infrared camera system so that Stephen can find his prey in the dead of the night. The system uses a camera which Ralph is mounting in the front grille and a screen which is placed in the car. Job done. Stephen's Bentley is now a fully equipped hunting machine. With the Mulsanne's hunting kit falling into place, the boys are ready to tackle the final step of the build, a sporty body kit to tie together the car's bold new look. The clay model, commissioned two weeks ago in Coventry, is ready. I hope it's worth it. I think you'll be truly impressed. This is very much your cup of tea. Ronan's convinced Mr Khan to come along to sprinkle some of his own styling magic on the project. Wow. And here's Igor, here's the car. Good to see you again. This is Mr Khan, who's you've been modelling for. Are you the young man that did that? It's good, isn't it? 
impressive, very really impressive. Yeah. So you've done that in two weeks, eh? Yes, indeed. Well mm -hmm. done to you. Mm -hmm. Even work Saturday. For the first time, Rollins has done something right and impressed me with the clay model work. I knew we'd done an amazing thing with the clay, but I didn't know if Mr. Khan would like it. So when he did and when his face lit up, it was quite a relief. OK, so you ready for this? Yes. Sir. I'm going to give you a quick design brief on this. Let's start from here. Right, this is just a suggestion, yeah? I'm just thinking out loud now here. Create me a very subtle roof wing basically flows into the car itself, yeah? Now, I might use it, I might not use it, but I just want to see what it looks like. Clear modelling gives us an opportunity to try things out, so if we don't like something, we want to make a bit of a change, we can actually do that change there and then. A spoiler, which is the complete boot lid itself. So it's going to come across here, and it's going to pull out like this, and it's going to come back, so it's going to really flow really nicely. Once I'm with a clear modeler or with a stylist, I'm in my own little world. If you look at the front here, it's pulled out on the, on the bonnet itself. Do the same here, just apply it a bit more and make it slightly bigger, yeah? In here, create me a couple of vents, so it just visually looks different. You got sort of the picture I'm looking for? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. My head's flowing with loads and loads of ideas, and I know exactly what I want now. Once Khan settled on his final decisions, the Coventry team will spend the next few days creating clay prototype modifications, which will be then digitally scanned and the data sent to Khan's body shop for manufacture. And there's a lot of work for you got to do, but we're actually dealing with an expensive car here, so we've got to get it right. Well, I've got another idea. Gullwing doors. Tell me that's not going to look cool on a Bentley Mulsanne. Are you actually serious? Yeah. It Fit just perfectly. shows that you'll, you know, you'll never make a good stylist, mate. Supercar maestro Avzal Khan has commissioned engineering duo Ralph and Ronan to modify a stately Bentley Mulsanne to cope with the rigours of an off-road hunting yeah. trip. Khan has created a new styling package for the car. Create me a very subtle roof wing. By remodelling a quarter-scale clay replica. And now Ronan has come to the body shop to see the real size parts being made. The clay model is a fantastic tool for visualising your ideas, and Mr. Khan has already used that to tweak his ideas very slightly. The next stage of that is to build the final thing, and this is the realisation of that idea, the thing that everyone will see is the finished product. As the kit is a one-off, it's being handcrafted. The team model the new shapes out of foam before applying fibreglass to make the final part. They've already done this little one on the back. They've done a little lip spoiler on the boot and they're working on the front as well. But with the hunting season soon drawing to an end, the boys need to work fast to get the car complete and back to Stephen. It's the night before the car has to be returned to the client and Ralph is in the workshop fitting the final element. Tomorrow, the boys are taking the Bentley to rural Scotland, where Mr. Khan's demanding client, Stephen, awaits. What I'm doing at the moment is putting the, the straps over the long-range fuel tank. And this little chap, he should be able to get us all the way to Scotland without having to stop, which is quite a feat, really. We've done a lot to this car to make it suitable for the rough terrain up in Scotland. I think the owner's going to be quite impressed. At least I hope he is, anyway. With just hours to spare, the work is done. Khan has completed its transformation into a raised, long-range hunting vehicle, ready to face the full force of nature. The imposing wilds of the Scottish Highlands, bleak, beautiful and remote, and the perfect testing ground for this stunning Bentley. I have to say, the Bentley is looking damn good from here. It's a truly remarkable looking machine, isn't it? Nothing else like it. A million miles from its slick city image, can this car prove itself against some of Britain's toughest terrain? The Bentley we've created certainly is a radically different look. Won't be anything that the customer has seen before. And I believe after he's used it for a little while, he'll fall in love with it. What do you think? I think there's a good chance of it. It's Definitely nothing else like it on the road. It's time to find out whether Mr. Khan's gamble to put the boys in charge of the Malsan was a wise move. All the projects is important that they've got to get right, but this one here is, is, a, is a dear friend. He's very eccentric, 
He wants something that looks stylish, but at the same time, it's a statement. So I'm a little bit nervous. Let's hope they deliver. The original £229,000 Morsan has been reborn as an off-road ready hunting machine. At the push of a button, the luxury cruiser lifts 10 centimetres to carry the occupants over unforgiving terrain. And once their day's shooting turns to night, those on board can retire to an expanding roof hide. It's a bold new look, and there's one opinion that matters. Oh, my word! Aha! Aha! Gentlemen. Hello, hello. Welcome to the castle. This is looking fantastic. I'm glad you like it. You managed to get everything done that uh, we were talking about? Everything all, all done. Time. So you have adjustable suspension height, so you yep. can raise it quite a lot for the off-road purposes that you talked about. Yeah. We've got off-road tyres now. Fantastic. We have a night vision system. Oh, yes. Now, how did you manage to install that? That will actually it? be up in the hide. So yep. the hide, as you can see, is fitted, should you wish to hide yourself away, as it were, from yep. the element. I have to say, the hide of the night of things, that was a, a stroke of genius. Um, somewhat unusual and very forward-thinking, but definitely very useful. The addition of the long-range fuel tank in there as well, you can basically drive from London uh, up to here. So right I have here. to say things. So what's the total range, do you reckon? Um, I reckon about 1,000 miles. About 1,000 miles. miles. So that's great. I can leave London yeah, and be in yeah. Scotland in one hit. The fact that it can do 1,000 uh, miles, the range increased so dramatically, I mean, that's a wonderful thing. Oh, absolutely perfect. That. <laughs> How's that? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. The gun case and the boot, absolutely wonderful. All delivered to perfection. Gentlemen, I have to say, I have to congratulate you. You've done an absolutely wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely. Well, I think it's all very well just standing here looking at it. I think we need to actually take it out there and see what it can do. Oh, brilliant. Lovely. Excellent. Excellent. Shall we follow you? Yep, absolutely. Still got that nice Bentley ride quality. I don't seem to be bottoming out on those ruts coming out of the uh, out of the drive, which has always been a problem. The Mulsanne's on-road pedigree has never been in doubt. Always wanted to be able to take the Bentley up here. Now it's time to get serious. Effortless, just riding over the bumps. It's raining heavily, the ground is very uneven. It's going to be a real trial for the car to get to where we want to go hunting. Now, this is where we always get a crunch underneath. Oh, great, wonderful. Oh, this is effortless. Look at that, it's coping fine with this terrain. It's doing well. Isn't it doing well? It's like going hunting on a magic carpet. Amazing for a two-wheel drive car. Two-wheel drive, exactly. And here we are. It's made it to the top. All right, chaps. So what do you think? It's a jolly good job, I have to say. <laughs> Brilliant. It's up here. Everything works perfectly. Well, I have to say, Ralph and Ron have actually done really well. They've taken my idea and delivered it to perfection. It performed absolutely faultlessly. Without question, I think an excellent engineering job. Today's been very successful. The customer is smiling. Everything seems to be going extremely well. The car does exactly what it was supposed to do. I think it's time to treat ourselves. Have a warm cup of tea. Excellent. Excellent.